Okay, it's eight o'clock, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? As I get my recorder going, okay. Uh, Daryl Newkirk? Here. <coughs> Rich Maston. Here. Kathy Calhoun? Here. This Woo! <laughs> I love it when the flourish comes on when I say my name. Rachel Anker? <laughs> is here. Um, Sharon Roy? Here. Pam Moser? Here. Steve McCullough? Here. John Kalilla? Here. Howard Webster will not be with us today. Uh, Kathy Dunham? Here. Kenny Curley? Here. Yukiko Hayata? Here. Pam Delabar? Here. George Eigenhauser? Here. Cindy Bird? Here. Carol Krasnowski? Here. Melanie Morgan? Here. Brian Moser? Here. Uh, and we have Shelly Perkins? Here. Aline Tartaglia? Here. Is James Simbro on today? I am here. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Wong? Here. Eva Chen? Here. Thank you. And Gavin Cow? Here. Here. Is there anyone whose name I have uh, inadvertently forgotten or who is on the panel whose name I have not mentioned? Okay, thank you. I turn it back over to you, Mr. President. Daryl, you're on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, did 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 we uh, call Matt Wong? We did, and he's here. Oh, okay. All right. I, I it was at the bottom of the list. So, okay. Um, so uh, I, I w before we started the meeting, I went over uh, our orders of business. We don't have to approve our orders of business because we did that yesterday. Uh, we talked about. Uh, uh, Order number 22 was discussed yesterday. It may need to be brought back because uh, the regional win issue was table, uh, uh, reconsidered and then tabled and that will be a special order under unfinished business. So our next order of business is uh, uh, order number 23, which is the EMS conversion and Pam Delabar, I will turn the mic over to you for that discussion. Thank you, Daryl. Yep. Uh, those of you that read my report, just a little background. Over two years ago, when we met in 2018 with the Breed Council Secretaries, the board on Saturday at the board meeting in, in Atlanta, I brought up the EMS. It's called Easy Mind System. It's a way of identifying cats that um, is not particularly um, uh, guesswork. It's being used, it was developed first uh, for use in FIFA. They've used it over 30 years. The majority of our major associations in the world are converting to EMS, even Tika. Uh, it's very easy in identification of breeds. It allows breeds that were not particularly uh, annotated in the beginning of the EMS uh, for organizations to come up with their own. I gave an example like of Havana Brown, which could be HAV. Um, we have over 6,988 6, different breed, color, sex annotations. And that's a minimum. Uh, what I gave as the example would be like a black Persian. Uh, black Persian male is 0108. Uh, you have to know the numbers to know the breed you're looking at. Now, after the dash and the numbers that follow afterwards, that number is unique to the specific cat. If we change to a different system, that number is there forever. A black Persian male under EMS is capital letters P-E-R-N. Now, most of the letters follow a genetic code. 
like Abyssinian, a blue Abyssinian is A-B-Y small a. But the Persian, there's no particular um, genetic code for black, so they used the French word noir for black. So it would be P-E-R-N. Um, under our system, not too many people know what a 9070 is. I happen to know it's a Norwegian forest cat um, with uh, under EMS, which would be NFOD, D being the genetic code for red, O2, which is high white, or Harlequin. 21 is unspecified tabby markings and 62 would be copper eyed white. I have dealt with this system for the past 10 years. So I have become fairly, fairly fluent with many of the properties that we have. EMS codes are basically on one page. There can be a number of combinations um, but I th think it is something I would like to take forward and study even more. Uh, and I'm asking the board the question, are you interested in me putting in the effort? And by the by, I have been uh, touching base with Leanne Rupi on, on the modernization and uh, she is all in favor of, of, of looking at EMS. So I'm bringing it to the board. Do you want me to go further? That's it. Okay, Rachel Anger, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, my main question is what kind of cost is this going to be? My concern is that uh, um, while I'm in support of doing something that the rest of the world is doing, um, we just put tremendous amount of effort into uh, uh, the project that, that Steve Merritt has been working on. May I answer? I, yeah, I also went over this with Dick Kalmeyer two years ago. And he is also, I think, on the Modernization Committee and has uh, said that the effort really is not all that, that bad in, in the conversion. Okay, Elaine. Oh. Well, a couple of things. Um, I wasn't done, but oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. well, I'm going to address what you were mentioning, Rachel. If you have, so I, you know, no one knows the system better than those in the central office. Dick Kalmeyer is great. Modernization committee is great. We're the ones that know the system. <clears throat> so really, we're we should be part of the discussion. Um, it, it can be done. In fact, the EMS codes were provided to us as part of the genetic project that we're doing now. Um, I'm not sure if they were put into the software, but it's something that we could add. Of course, there'll be a cost. I don't know what the cost will be. This is a major undertaking because it affects every registration, litters, pedigrees, shows, does it affect color classes? I mean, it really is, um, it, it's going to be a major project. James, I don't know if you have any idea, but I'm thinking, I just don't know, $30,000, $40,000. Every program has to be changed, tested, promoted. Um, it, so it, it touches mostly everything in our system. So I'm not against this, but it will, it will come at a cost. Okay, James, do you wanna comment on the cost? Um, sure. Yeah, uh, there's, it really depends on how we implement this. Um, you know, if we don't completely ditch our BCS codes and we add the EMS as, you know, a companion to those, um, I think it could actually be, you know, done fairly easily and, and I wouldn't say cheaply, but that would probably be the lowest cost route. Um, you know, maybe we do some type of a transition. We continue the BCS codes, but we include the EMS, you know, we can print them on the certificate. We have room. Where it does get tricky is pedigrees. If we start printing pedigrees with a BCS and the EMS codes, um, you know, room is, especially when you get a five and a six generation pedigree, it's not a lot of space there. Um, 
Now, if we're completely replacing the BCS codes with EMSs, you know, then that's, yeah, they're probably 30, 40, you know, the, the rabbit hole goes deep on that one. Thank you, Rachel. You can finish your conversation now. Okay, thank you. Um, I've been asked questions that I can't answer. Um, I can uh, compare this to when I was in elementary school, there was a big initiative for us to, in America, to switch over to the metric system. Um, we spent a couple years in school learning the metric system and the conversions and everything, and we're speaking the metric language, and then it was abandoned. Uh, because we're Americans, you know. <laughs> so, and I, I compare this with that situation. Um, the question I would like answered, even though I understand the EMS system, is uh, it just seems another language. Why, why is it better? Um, and what would be the purpose of making the switch other than so that we could all speak the same language? What, is this better? Can I answer? Yeah. Uh, One. Ra hang on. Let, is Ra Rachel, are you finished? Yes. Okay, Pam, you can answer her question. One, all I'm asking the board is do you want me to go further in investigating the system? I gave you an example. I'm not saying we need to start this. I'm not asking the board for permission to convert to EMS. It is a means for us to be able to communicate with the rest of the cat fancy worldwide. Even a very traditionally based cat fancy, such as the governing council of the cat fancy, GCCF in Britain, is going over to EMS. I have spent hour upon hours going over pedigrees with FIFA judges wanting to know, is this cat an exotic? Is this cat a Persian? Is this cat a long hair exotic? How do we fit this in? We don't have to change our philosophies. We don't have to change our policies or our rules. All we are looking at is a simplified method for people to be able to look at one of our pedigrees and tell what in the hell the cat is. Uh, this is what I want, as I said, I've talked with Leanne, uh, Leanne Rupi. They're interested in the modernization, looking at this, or I don't have to expend the effort. It's up to the board. That's all I'm asking. Do you want me to go further in looking at this looking at the costs. I didn't even bring costs up yet because, you know, why should I even go further if the board's not interested in going into EMS? That's it. Okay, Melanie Morgan, you're recognized. Hey, thank you. Um, looking at the chat, Lorraine Shelton, who I think was working uh, with you guys in IT on the genetics program, um, says that she's given a lot of the EMS information to IT, so some of that may already be incorporated in. Um, but just talking about this in general, uh, EMS is that international language, and it's being adopted by, by associations around the world. I really think there's a significant advantage for us to adopt the same language that's used by everyone else. Um, the uniformity is certainly a, a step in the right direction. Uh, I don't think that it necessarily needs to replace color classes, which would impact on so many levels of programming, at least not initially. But in terms of moving forward, I really think that um, although there may be some costs associated with it, this is um, an investment in our future and um, making us, you know, just a, a, a more streamlined professional um, association that's in line with the rest of the world. Rich Maston, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I have a number of questions here, and I think before we can um, we can give Pam uh, the okay to go ahead and do the work is I think we we need some answers to questions. So I think preliminarily, Pam and others can work on this project. And um, some of the questions that I have, and and Melanie addressed some of them. So did Pam is. Uh, uh, going back to Rachel's question, I want to point out I do have a number of questions. So if Pam wants to take these down or get them from the, the minutes, 
um, the rationale on is this better um, is probably very important in determining what we want to do with it. And, and Pam, I don't need you to answer the questions right now so we can save time. Um, I would like uh, more information from James um, on Steve's work. A uh, couple areas here. Um, how much are we spending on Steve's work for the um, color coding process? And is there any waste um, by combining these or will one replace the other? Now I've heard that we can keep the color codes, but I'm not convinced that that's what the long-term direction is. So I think in order for the board to come up with the right um, decision on directing PAM, let's get an understanding of what Steve's um, project is in terms of cost. How much is this project going to cost? What is the estimated turnaround time for this project? And, and let's be realistic, not, not be super aggressive thinking we're going to get this done in six months to 12 months. Is this a two year, three year, four year project? Um, and uh, um, can this project tie in with what Steve is doing? And that would probably have to go back to the uh, program developers, whether it's Sonnet or whoever's working on this to see if it is compatible or not. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Kathy Calhoun, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, yes, Rich uh, touched upon several things that I was interested in as well. Uh, I don't really want the central office to be, you know, at this point in time, making estimates about cost because we, we really have to do quite a bit of research before we can really understand what those costs may be. And uh, again, with timing, I think we need to be, we need to take a conservative stance. You know, we are in a very uncertain time. So I'm certainly that this probably the investigation portion of this project would probably take us through the end of this, this season. And it probably wouldn't be something that we could really dig into into next season. But I just want us to just be mindful of the fact that we are in a, uh, a very unstable time. We're doing well. Uh, but that could change. So I would hate for us to make a big investment uh, at this particular time with COVID thank and all those sorts of things going on. Okay, thank you, Kathy. It's sort of like jumping off a diving board. You want to make sure you got water in the pool. Yeah. Uh, George Eigenhauser, you're recognized. Thank you. We all have a lot of questions about this. We have questions about how it would be implemented whether it would replace our current system or supplement it. We have questions about cost. And the way you answer questions is by doing an investigation, which is what Pam proposes. So to me, this is a no brainer. Of course, we wanna look into it. Of course, we wanna see if this is better for CFA or not. And then when we get the answers, then we can have a more detailed debate about how we wanna use that information. But the first step is, is to give Pam the authority to do the investigation and report back to the board. Thank you, George. That's a good point. Uh, Kenny Curley, you're recognized. You're muted, Kenny. Yeah, I, I fully support continuing uh, the investigation on this issue. I, I really think that it's, it's important that we should modernize. I liken it to uh, driving on the wrong. Um, if you drive on the wrong side of the street than everybody else, you may want to turn around and get with the program. <laughs> so uh, just remember, let's all you know drive in the same direction if it's going to be beneficial for the association. So exploration, step one, I agree with George. I think we should uh, support Pam's offer to continue. Okay, so someone want to make a motion to allow Pam to uh, do further investigation into this. I'll make that motion, Rachel. Thank you, Steve Rachel. Seconds. Steve McCullough seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, any further discussion? Enough. Kathy, you and Kenny still have your hands up. Oh, I was, I, I was jumping on voting. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, an, you anticipated me. Okay. I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, is there any objection? Because uh, it seems like everybody's uh, talking favorably about this. 
Okay, uh, hearing no objection by unanimous consent, Pam, uh, you're authorized uh, by the board to uh, pursue this further and come back. Can you give us uh, a, a time frame of when you might want to bring this back? Uh, I would say probably in February, because I, as I said, I do want to do some coordination with uh, Leanne and her group because they were all already uh, <coughs> considering uh, something in the, in this uh, vein. So it, it next, I mean February would be fine. That way, I can provide the board more uh, examples of what we're actually looking at, and hopefully, we can do away or. If we can tame 6,988 BCSs. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, my personal opinion is if we were in step with the rest of uh, the cat world, it would be a really nice thing because when a pedigree comes in from a foreign registry, we wouldn't have to be going to a chart trying to figure out what their code is and how it matches up with our code. So you've got a lot of work cut out and I wish you all the luck in the world, Pam. Thank you for bringing Thank that to you. our can attention. I, can I bring up one other thing? Sure. One of, the, one of the problems that we're having is not us really getting in the uh, uh, pedigrees from the other association. It's when we sell cats to other associations, it's our pedigrees being translated to them. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, business order 24 is board members guidebook. Pam Delbar, that's also you. Yes. Um, I have gone through and with Aline's help have modernized a great deal of the non-legal portions of it. I know Sally, uh, Shelley and Cindy have been very, very busy. I would hope that we can have uh, the, um, uh, what I want to say, the, the draft copy of it for, for board approval uh, by the December meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, in the old book, uh, everything in, in there, every page was marked confidential. Is there a reason? I don't understand why the board member's guidebook is confidential. I, I, I think that should be able to be viewed by anybody. Is there? Can I, can, if I can answer that. Sure. We had our first one in 2006, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, and at that time, there was some proprietary information in there. I mean, the, the, the CFA, uh, uh, goals and all of all of that was not proprietary but when we got to to personnel uh items we considered that close hold and um really didn't want that out it was greatly expanded back in 2011 if i remember correctly okay and from then um a lot of the information became uh confidential okay uh, it's it's up to the board what they they feel is necessary to keep close hold or, um, you know, it is a guidebook for for board members. So, well, I understand, but uh, you know, in order to maintain transparency with our uh, constituents, uh, I, I I I read through and I thought, well, you know, what here, what is in here that really should be withheld so that uh, our constituents can't read it. So. Uh, I'd just like for the board to keep that in the back of their mind whenever this is brought up for discussion, okay? Not a problem. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Aline, will you want to bring uh, Leanne Rupi uh, into the panelists? Sure will. And I think George needs to be re-added. He got uh, booted. Oh, did he? Yep, okay. he is. Let me go ahead and bring George in first. I... I don't see Leanne. Oh, Ruby. she was on there a little bit earlier. Um, I'm assuming she's in by the name of Leanne. Mm. No, I don't see her. You might ask. Oh, me. maybe that's Moto G7 Plus. <laughs> she, okay, let's see if that's. Yes, I'll go to her and see if that's. If that's Leanne, I'll change her name. The Moto? Yeah, who, <laughs> whoever there, I'm thinking that's the person that's Leanne, but 
that person is muted. They need to unmute themselves and identify. Can you hear me now? Is that you, Leanne? Yes, I was the Moto G7 Plus. Oh, okay. I'm in motion, okay. so sorry, I'm not on my computer. Okay, okay. let me right. change uh, your name. Leanne, let her, yeah, she's going to change your name. And then she can, uh, once that's done, she can scroll up so that we can get to your committee report. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. Uh, Leanne, welcome, and thank you for uh, taking on the responsibility of uh, heading up this committee. Uh, you got a lot of really hard workers, really smart people on your committee, and so I think the whole board is waiting uh, to hear what you guys have to say today. Well, we are uh, just beginning. Um, it's been kind of t team building and uh, strategizing over the past month or so. About six weeks ago, Daryl and I had a chat about his priorities. Um, you know, first and foremost is to get us back in the show halls. And if we can support any of that through either supporting technology or processes, we're happy to do that. Um, then there was a couple things that were low hanging fruit that we could work on. There were just easy fixes. We did a couple of those. One of those, I believe, was sent out with this report that was the, um, uh, the, the QR codes. And clubs can use those. They're full sheet pages to use in the show hall. You can put them at the end of benching rows or wherever so people can use the QR code. It will take you to the CFA site that will give you all the information on whatever breed it is that you're looking at. And we did already have online the tiny little thing that each individual exhibitor could use, but we didn't have, um, we didn't have something you could print out as a full sheet or even use as a poster. So that's what we created. So for all of the breeds, it mirrors exactly what's on the CFA website. We didn't do a household pet because we don't have household pets under breed. However, I'm thinking that we probably should. I just don't know where to link it to. So if somebody tells me where to link it to, I will add one for household pet. Um, beyond that, um, I listed many of the projects that have been, or suggestions that, for projects that had been sent to me. And I think that there's a lot more out there, a lot more people with wonderful ideas that are things that could be easy fixes for CFA that would make a lot of people's life a whole lot easier. It's just nobody at central office has time to work on it. So this is me telling CFA, the people of CFA, if you have those ideas, please just send them. I mean, we may not be able to do it. There may be some technological reason we can't do it. There may be a legal reason we can't do it. There may be a variety of reasons that it hasn't been done already. However, if we can do it, we'll work on it. If we're going to make your life easier, this is something that this committee can, can do um, without putting extra burden on central office. So if you don't know how to reach me, it's leannerupi at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear from a lot of people. Uh, the the things that were listed are, are big projects for the most part that will probably take a lot of time and a, a, a bit of resource to complete. As you guys who've been around for a while are looking at this and you've probably addressed several of these in the past, you're, you're running through your head thinking, oh, well, we didn't do that because of this reason. We didn't do that because of that reason. And you know the history with a lot of this. Uh, those of us on the committee probably don't. So the first step to get to doing any of these major projects or to working with the central office on these projects is to do a process map. How are we doing things now? And I'm not sure if, if one exists, I've never seen it or heard of it, but I would like to work on a process map with different swim lanes for each area uh, from registrations to show managers to uh, to show from clubs applying for an application for a show all the way through submitting the report to central office and how it's processed in central office. Uh, registrations is huge, but it, there are so many things within CFA that nobody understands how they work. And if we can get the process map in place so that the people who are working on these projects understand what is happening now, it will be a whole lot easier to understand what impact a change will have. 
So really, that's my first order of business is working on these process maps. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be time consuming and it's going to require a lot of assistance from those in central office who know these processes. However, the goal is once it's done, it will save you a lot of work because we're going to we're going to fix some of the broken processes, uh, find some efficiencies as we start documenting these. We can you know, tweak little things to make them more efficient. Figure out where the old technology is that could easily be replaced with new technology uh, that just maybe someone hasn't had time to do or didn't think of doing. So that is the first big undertaking. And it's probably going to take eight to 10 people who are pretty knowledgeable about CFA processes who worked with CFA for quite a while to do those. And I think that the people on this team, we have a, a good group of people that have worked in different areas and can contribute a lot of those ideas. Um, I'm still looking for a couple of people and we'll find those gaps as we move along. So don't be surprised if you see in the future that I've added a couple people to the team, uh, to the core team. And then within the committee, we'll probably have a couple subcommittees who will work on very specific tasks. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, Rachel Anger, you have your hand up. Uh, thanks. Uh, I don't have a question about that specific point, Leanne, but uh, I did want to say that, uh, uh, are you done with your report? Because I didn't want to interrupt you in the middle of it. Um, pretty much. I mean, you can see, you know, what I've written. I don't think I need to go line by line through what I've written, but those are the ideas that have been submitted yep. to us. So and She has a couple of action items we'll need to address after we discuss. Perfect. I, I think you have just explained the relevance of this committee and the, the great need for it. So good luck. I, I'll email you privately with a couple suggestions I have. We've got some past board members that really have some great knowledge here. Um, I just wanted to mention with the household pet thing, um, uh, without having a QR code for it, Kathy Black, the chair of the Companion Cat World Committee, um, posted on the chat the same thought I was okay. having about linking it to her uh, area of the website. Correct. And I think it probably wouldn't hurt to do one for newbies as well, just as an informational, hey, if you're new, you're interested, use this QR code and it will take you right to where you want to go. That's a great idea. Melanie, Mor are you done, Rachel? Okay, uh, Melanie Morgan, you're recognized. Thank you. Hi. Um, thanks for that uh, overview, Leanne. It's, it's really great, and this is really a super direction to be going in. Uh, I do have a question on the QR codes, and that is, um, who selected the photos and proof the verbiage on those? Uh, I know as a brief uh, council secretary, I wasn't contacted or consulted. If you look at the CFA website, this is exactly off the CFA website. So I didn't choose anything. Whoever put up our breeds on the website would be the one you'd need to talk to. So where did the photos come from? I have no idea. As a breed council secretary, I can tell you that the photo that's up there is about six years old, and those are not the words I would have chosen either. But somebody did, um, and somebody probably asked for input at one time and didn't get it. But uh, uh, whoever set that site up or set that page up that has all the breeds listed, that would be the Elaine, do you have any person idea? to talk to about content. Thank you. Um, our normal process would be involved the Greek Council Secretaries, but I'm not aware of what happened about six years ago. So I will check in with Kathy Durdick and I'll get that information. Thank you. Yeah, I've been Greek Council Secretary for well over a decade and I know we had provided some, but the, the pictures that are used don't make sense. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, at any rate, that'd be great. Thanks. I know. Thank you, Melanie. And Kenny Curley. Just oh, sorry, Ellie, go ahead. No, I was just going to respond to Melanie, this is Leanne, um, saying that the links that I created, whatever is done to the site to change photos or content, descriptive content, won't be affected by, um, by whatever changes are made on that site. As long as the link remains the same, the QR code will remain the same. Nothing has to change. Photos can be updated annually if you want with the breed winners. Uh, content regarding breed description can be changed as frequently as, as you want. And as long as that URL doesn't change, the QR code doesn't need to change. 
So when they click on the U, uh, the URL, uh, uh, it, it, whatever has been updated will automatically refresh. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Thank exactly. Thank you, Leanne. Okay. Uh, Kenny Curley, you're recognized. Yeah, I just want to uh, compliment uh, Leanne for, uh, to me, a very difficult startup. You created the direction. Um, you're, there are going to be bumps in the road. I fully support what you're doing. Um, I love Rachel's suggestion about getting some of our more seasoned retired judges involved. I don't think that uh, they would be adverse to helping you. Uh, so that might be a, an idea that you may want to use, but uh, I know in business you need to manage and that's exactly what you're doing. You're creating a new committee with your own ideas and a, a very admirable effort up to this point. So congratulations. Thank you. I, I liken it to that expression of turning a battleship and uh, uh, a battleship in motion, certainly a lot easier to turn. So if we keep moving forward, we will start turning in the direction of modernization uh, as we progress down, down, our, down our normal path. Thank you, Leanne. Rich Maston, you're recognized. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, Leanne, uh, thank you to you and your team for taking on such a um, major project here. You have a lot of work ahead of you. Um, earlier, you had mentioned that um, there's a need for resources. Um, just uh, would like to know, are those financial resources you need? And do you need any financial resources for this year? And if so, how much are you estimating you may need? So for this, this year, um, annual or physical? Because if we're, we're talking throughout 2021, I'm sure there will be uh, requests for financial resources. At this point, throughout the end of this year, we are really in the planning stages. And so the financial resources would be nominal, if any. Um, starting next year, it might be a little bit different because we'll work together to talk about some technology, new equipment purchases, but I believe all of that would go through IT and a normal IT budget. Um, so that's gonna be a big collaboration between us to figure out what that means and maybe adjusting what we thought we were going to purchase. <clears throat> some things I think you may find you're actually getting some effort for free uh, and you don't have to purchase things. So some of your IT money going towards development um, might not get spent. I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed on that one. But as we come up with more ideas and we get further into the year, then that's going to change. So we're at this kind of bell curve right now. We're just at the very beginning. And as, as change happens, obviously there's going to be both a resource allocation increase and a financial increase. Um, but the hope is as we start doing this, if we look at the, the amount of man hours required by central office at this point in time, if we can do a comparative analysis of hours worked on certain projects at central office to the donated hours of this team, and then kind of balance that out. I hope that that will give us a little bit of overflow that we can put towards thing in the, things in the future. I understand the comments that were made earlier that we're in uncertain times and we don't want to go out on a limb and commit financially for things that we, um, we really just don't know what we're gonna have in the next year or so. But the plan that I'm looking at overall is a 10 year plan. I, I believe in planning in decades. So if we're planning a decade ahead, this little piece that we're doing over the next year is going to be really very microscopic in comparison to what we're gonna see in the future. So I don't think anybody should really be sweating much either financially or from the human resource perspective input um, in the very near future. Okay, okay great question. Yeah, that, that, that's great. If, if something should change, um, please reach out to uh, Kathy Calhoun and myself from a financial uh, part of it. Thank you very and much. Like I said, it would probably be at this point, anything really microscopic as far as the budget goes, 
um, you know, if we ask for a couple hundred dollars to purchase some equipment to beta test some, you know, like videoing the, the rings in the show halls or, or that's what I foresee at this point in time. Thank you, Rich. George Eigenhauser, you're recognized. Yeah, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on the details here, but I just want to point out that we actually have two different household pet efforts going on. We have the CCW, which is really kind of a social club among household pet people, whether they exhibit in CFA or not. And we also have the CFA household pet committee that is specifically for people who want to show household pet in CFA. And so when we're thinking about which to link to, we may need to link to both, depending upon whether the person is looking in, in terms of joining the CCW club or whether they want resources about how to enter a CFA cat show. So Leanne, when, I get, when we get done today, I will send you an email for the household pet committee chair and then hopefully I appreciate you can that. Thank you. communicate with her. Thank you. Great. Thank you, George. Rachel Anger, you're recognized. I was just waving. I'll take my hand down. Uh, okay. James Sembro, you have your hand up. Yes. Thanks, Daryl. Um, Leanne, I just wanted to reach out. Um, this is James Sembro. I'm the citizens and administrator. Yeah. Yeah. I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're going to um, be one of my favorite people here in the near yeah. future. Yes. No, I want to say I, I am happy to give any feedback on anything. I'm probably most familiar as far as the infrastructure of the system. Um, and a lot of the processes in the office. Um, and that is one thing we, we're always looking at streamlining uh, processes. We've, we've actually been doing a lot of that even with uh, COVID going on. So we've refined some of our uh, processes for people who work off site. So we definitely embrace the technology and uh, try to invest, you know, invest in it as, as we can to smooth things out. So feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, James. Appreciate it. Okay, Leanne, you've got, uh, looks like one or two uh, board action items in your report. Um, the, the resource thing, I think we kind of just addressed. And okay. uh, I, you know, I'm going to, I am, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, Daryl, is I, I am going to need to touch base with different people in the office. And I realize that that is going to be your normal work time where you have commitments and you, you already work a full time. And now we're adding uh, an additional commitment to work with this team. Um, so just to acknowledge that those people who are going to be part of different change efforts uh, are going to be asked to, to contribute. Um, and that's kind of just an aroundabout thing when, when they have to d determine what their priorities are, that the board take into consideration that everybody agreed that this, this team was necessary um, and give it enough uh, value that you can prioritize appropriately. Okay. Uh, I um, think you can probably work with Aline uh, uh, to see time commitments uh, uh, for people that you'll need to be uh, interviewing. Yeah. And that's, okay. you know, with the system design and all that, okay. all the different components, the process yeah. stuff. Yep. Um, and then, then you guys already mentioned that there are some people who can send ideas, but as you have worked through things in the past, um, I know everybody has just this kind of running note in the back of their head of ideas that had come up along the way that were really good ideas, but there was some hurdle they just couldn't get over. And so we didn't manage to do it because of X, Y, Z. Um, I'd like to see those and see how they might fit into a new framework and if, if those ideas are possible. So I'd ask all the board members uh, to kind of go through the, some of their old notes and, and come up with things that really have value and forward those to us to see what we can do. Okay, one of your action items here is grant access to the CFA system and for structure diagrams. Is that something right. you want the board to, to uh, vote on and allow you well, uh, this access? Exactly. That's one of those um, permissions thing that I, I'm not sure how much of an architecture diagram actually exists 
in a way that it can be shared? Um, you guys will have to answer that question for me, but for us to do things like Gavin's project with the entry, um, entry app on the phone, that's something that he's doing as a beta project where he's at, but there's no reason that can't be used globally on any local system. But we need to know how we're going to interface with CFA's existing system to make that happen. And, and we have a couple pretty tech savvy people in this group who could look at our current infrastructure and know what, where we're going to touch different databases at, where we're going to have security issues, what the problem is going to be that we're going to have to address before we can actually move forward with some of these projects. So yes, we, we will need access to not necessarily the data at this point, but at least the infrastructure and where the data resides. Okay, and uh, is this something that our legal advisory council needs to be involved in uh, for uh, uh, security and protection of private information on cats? Yeah, and that's why I specifically said maybe not the data itself, because we don't want to have to get legal involved right now in privacy policy and, and such. So if we can get infrastructure diagrams and database formats, layouts, uh, maybe access to certain certain uh, processes used to manipulate data without actually having access to the data itself. We'd be fine with that at this point in time. So I don't think legal needs to be involved. I think we just have to have a couple people on our team that the board is comfortable with having access to that infrastructure diagram. Okay, thank you. Rich Maston, you're recognized. Yeah, so James may be able to answer the question whether or not a couple people can have access to that data without having access to personal information. And if um, the individuals that are appointed to have access to the data, uh, there is a chance of any personal uh, information being viewed we would need to require um, confidentiality or non-disclosure agreements by those individuals, signed by those individuals in CAP at central office. Right, um, and, and I think anyone on our team is comfortable doing that, uh, depending on who's working on that specific project. Okay. Carol? Yes. I just wanted to mention that depending on exactly what access they're going to be requesting, we may need to get SANA involved. And if we do need to get SANA involved, then there will be a cost involved to that. Yeah. And so okay. until we talk a little further, we just, we don't know yet, but just to be aware of that. Okay. And so we're not, we're not asking for access at this point. We're asking for the blueprints. So it's, it's, you know, it's like the construction company is not going to work yet. We just want to look at the blueprints so that we know yeah. where we're going to build the house and, what the electrical diagram is and what's the floor plan, that yeah. sort of thing. What yeah. the square and, footage is. Yeah, and that may right. be accessible from Sonic, but we'll, we'll talk about that and we'll see. We'll okay. provide you with as much as we can. Thank okay. you, Aline. Rich Maston, your hands up. Yeah, Aline just brought up a real good point about Sonic involved. If Sonic is, is required, that really all should go through James and not anybody on this committee. Um, we don't want different point people um, touching base with SANA, and then we have an issue of what is prioritized. I think Leanne Correct. and James's uh, friendship will grow immensely over the next few months. Uh, Shelly Perkins, you have your hand up. I do. I'd like to see a confidentiality agreement, if we're, even if we're giving blueprints. Those are the kind of things that we don't just expose to the world. Um, and so just keeping it safe to the committee um, and a confidentiality agreement would uh, go a long ways. I'm fine with that. Okay, good. Um, so uh, I'm the liaison for this committee and I can't make a motion. So uh, can someone on the board make a motion to uh, allow this to proceed? No move. Uh, second. Pam, Pam Delabar. Uh, moved and Steve seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Rich Maston? 
Yeah, so the the only uh the only point is this goes back to what Shelly and I just brought up. This this will require confidentiality agreements. So if we approve this, we need the confidentiality agreement. So that that may we may want to make that part of the motion. Okay. That the confidentiality agreement is required in order to allow them to have access to this um, information. Okay, and you're making that uh, an amendment? Yes, I am. And Steve, I second. A, thank you, Steve, for the second. So the amendment is to include the confidentiality agreement uh, as an add-on clause uh, to the motion. Is there any discussion about the amendment? Okay, I see no hands up. So is there any objection uh, to the amendment? Hearing no objection, the amendment is approved by unanimous consent. So now we need to vote on the amended original motion, which in now includes the confidentiality agreement with whoever is going to have access to this. Is there any discussion on that? Any objection? Okay, seeing no objection by unanimous consent, uh, the board action item is uh, ratified. Thank you, Leanne. Do you have anything else to add? I think I'm done for now. And uh, hopefully we'll have more to report back next month. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, really looking forward to some great work coming out, out of this new committee. Um, all right. So thank you again, Leanne. So we need now to move on to unfinished business. And we have about four or five uh, uh, special orders uh, that need to be brought up. And uh, Aline, can you bring Ellen Honey uh, in? While well, Ellen's bringing uh, Ellen in uh, on the committee here, uh, I want to uh, announce that uh, the chair of the clerk clerking program, Dan Beaudry, sent me a letter of resignation, which I re accepted with regret last night. I put a note out uh, on the board list asking for someone to volunteer to take on the chair uh, of the clerking program. Uh, John Kalilla has uh, uh, volunteered. Uh, he's uh, got quite a few master clerks living uh, near him or in the same household. So I need a, a I move. We for... ratify the appointment. Thank you very much. Second. I this... Kenny seconds. Kenny seconds. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Rachel Anger, you have your hand up. So uh, is it just John or the Kalila family is how I read the email. I don't know if we can have three coaches. No, no I, I was just going to put John on. He can put ever who he wants on the, on the committee, which would be uh, Rana and uh, Bethany. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John Kalila. You're recognized. John, you're on mute. Can we have a change to Ron and Bethany as co-chair? They'd be doing the most of the work, but it'd be basically Team Kalila effort. Well, uh, it's, it's fine, John. You're going to be the one doing the reporting. I just want one person on as a chair, and then you can put them, you can add them as co-chairs to your committee when you do your first report. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome, and thank you for taking on the responsibility. All right, uh, any other discussion? Is there any objection to the ratification of John Kalila be appointed, being appointed as chair of the clerking program? Okay, seeing uh, no objection by unanimous consent, John Kalila is now the uh, clerking program chair. Aline, if you will get with Kathy Dirty and make that uh, change on the website. Okay. I'm doing right now. Okay. Uh, the next item is a resignation uh, on the uh, uh, judging program. And Ellen Honey, are you on? I am. Okay, can you make your announcement, please? Yes, um, I received last night a letter of resignation to, uh, to the judging program from Michelle Beaudry, which I accepted with regret. Okay, thank you. Mm. That'll be noted in the record. Okay, thank you, Ellen. Welcome. Uh, you can go ahead and stay on, and we will uh, will uh, the next uh, special order of business 
uh, Rachel will go ahead and cover uh, the kilometer rule that Ellen and uh, Pam Delabar uh, were working on. So Pam, you or Ellen want to take the lead uh, and do you have a, a, a print of what you guys? Ellen, do you want me to send that on to um, uh, Rachel? Send it, yes. to send it to Allie and Rachel so Allie can put it up on the screen. The screen. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Do you want to go ahead and present it? Uh, sure. Um, I will. Hold on. My, my, my iPad's going crazy here. The proposed wording is uh, actually in four parts. Judges, double specialty or higher residing in regions one through seven should judge a minimum of two shows outside of the regions, uh, judges region, region of residence or not less than 500 miles from their place of residence. One through seven, of course, uses mileage. Judges, double specialty or higher residing in region nine should judge a minimum um, of two shows outside the judge's re region of residence or not less than 500 kilometers, 310.686 miles from their place of residence. Next paragraph, judges double specialty or higher residing in the international division should judge a minimum of two shows outside the judge's region of residence or not less than 500 kilometers 310.686 miles from their place of residence. And judges, double specialty or higher residing in China should judge a minimum of two shows outside the judge's region of residence, not less than 500 kilometers, 310, et cetera, miles from their place of residence. Japan already has an 8.2B uh, 240 kilometers, uh, which is a, about 149 miles. Um, that's already stated. Okay. Uh, have you sent that to Aline so she can? I'm it? trying to right now, but I had okay. to had to read. And let me get off the Finnish alphabet here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to recognize Rachel while you're doing that. Okay, Rachel, you can go ahead. Yeah, just a quick one. The rule regarding China, you said the region in China that uh, China has areas, so it would be the area in China. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I had that annotated on a different piece of paper and I read region instead of area. You're correct. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else want to uh, talk about this while we're waiting? Uh, for Pam to get that sent to Aline so she can post it on the screen share. Melanie Morgan. Yeah, I had a hard time following without actually seeing it in writing because it's fairly convoluted. Uh, well, not convoluted, but there's just a lot of um, different places I think it shows up. I'm still not sure why we're trying to complicate something that is already fairly clear in the judging program rules. Okay. Uh, Kenny Curley, you're recognized. Yeah, let me make sure I'm unmuted. Hang on. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Um, I think a, a better explanation as to why these changes uh, need to be made and uh, the reasoning behind it uh, and explain it to everyone, please. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. Basically, the reason what we wanted to change was instead of having them do three or, or five, the original number, I believe, was five, um, we wanted to bring it down to two because travel is difficult at its best during, at least it's going to be for the next year or so. And um, we wanted, there she goes. 
Um, we wanted to make sure that, that the judges that were going through the process would not have the you know, burden of trying, they have no control over who asked them to judge a show. And that's always certainly been true, but we've had the ability to travel um, before this, of course, the COVID-19 and all the restrictions, we have no idea when that's gonna return. So we wanted to make sure that they did several shows out of their area, but not to the extent that they were asked for before. Could I ask you an additional question, Ellen? Certainly. Um, is this intended to be permanent or just for this show season? Well, it, at this point, I think we certainly want to look at it for this show season. And I would be happy to do it for this show season. Because we don't, we have no way of knowing what's going to happen come, you know, May of 2021, which would be a new social show season. So, Ellen, uh, I have a question. Maybe you can answer this. I think part of the the rationale behind this is if we make them fly to five shows outside of region, that really, really increases the cost. It may, may be a benefit uh, if they go outside of the region more, uh, but, but requiring them to do it uh, gets, I mean, these people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars to get through. So, I mean, it's up to you if you wanna make this just for this. this well, uh, all right. Excuse me, Daryl. Um, here's, the, here's the issue. Yes, it's very expensive. Um, and there, remember that this is for double specialty or higher, and that this is not for trainees and so forth. The clubs are paying for their, the, this is for the cost. The clubs pay for the cost. Okay. It's a question of they have to go, this is for you know, advancing through double specialty or higher. We're talking okay. about basically all breed judges. All right. Okay. Okay. But we do need the, my, the other point I wanted to make is that we're going to, no matter whether it's just for this season only or permanently, we are definitely going to be more regionalized. Okay. And I think it's going to take longer than maybe this season only to bring us back to some kind of, of area of normalcy. Okay, and Cotton States is an aber is I truly believe is an aberration of how many people are going to go to cat shows. The limitations are not going to be 250 cats in most areas. Most people are going to have 150 to 175 cats. They don't want to spend a lot of money on judges from outside the area. And I think that these numbers are reasonable. Okay, thank you. And the, we do need to change that region of residence on the China to area right. of residence. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done asking Ellen questions. That's okay. okay. Can I continue? No. Yep. No, I, look, I, I'm supportive of this for this show season. <laughs> I think that uh, some people may be concerned about lessening um, uh, the qualifications and uh, the areas, but I think the intent is to see different cats. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, which I fully support as a judge myself. But, uh, you know, as far as uh, any show being an aberration, that, that will be determined by what's coming up. Um, as I just, anyway, I, I don't want to get into that. But uh, for this show season, I could fully support this. I really do, because things are changing and we need to be flexible as a board, um, you know, to be able to react to things, things that come up at the last minute and what have you. So, uh, no, I, I'm supportive of this as written. I will support this as for this show season. I certainly understand uh, the other board members that are concerned about, um, you know, our judges being highly trained, which they have been in the past and hopefully it will continue under your tutelage uh, in the future. That's, uh, that's all I have to say. I'll lower my hand. Thank you, Melanie Morgan, you're recognized. Okay. I must be confused because I thought we were talking about section eight of the judging program rules, um, 8-2-A, which already calls for just two assignments out of a region. So there's no change. We're not looking to reduce or raise. They're simply changing the wording of something that was already working. I mean, or unless I'm just missing something and we're talking about another show rule or judging program rule. The current rule reads, 
judges, double specialty or higher, residing in regions one through seven, a minimum of, minimum of two shows must be judged outside the judge's region of residence or not less than 500 miles from their place of residence for each advancement consideration. That's pretty much what this new thing is saying. We're just trying to combine all these other regions which are covered in another section of the judging program rules. That's all I'm saying is, I don't understand why we're complicating something that has already basically said what they're trying to say, unless I'm missing the point. Okay, Melanie, can I respond to you? Yep. Sure. Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. So what happened was when we first looked at this, that's all we wanted to do was, because it wasn't mentioned, that's all we wanted to do was add in country or area. So we covered China because it only addressed regions one through seven. Region eight is addressed in 8.2b, but China and the international division are not addressed, nor is um, Europe, region nine. So we wanted to make sure that all of the areas of the world where we have a presence were addressed. That's the wording that we want to change. Now, you guys sent us back to make it clearer because we talked about area, you know, the, the, what we did and how we wrote it was muddled, and I agree. So I went back, you asked us to rewrite it, so I went back, I rewrote it so that each area would be clear and covered, and then I sent it to Pam, and I said, how is this wording? She was good with it, and that's where we are. And we okay. wanted to make it much clearer. Are you done, Melanie? No, um, I just want to finish by saying I, that makes all the sense in the world, but that's not what we, you were talking about a minute ago. You were talking about reducing it from five and saying that we were being unfair to people, et cetera. And I just want it clear for the record that we're not talking about changing any of the requirements. We're simply talking about clarifying wording. Um, and we can agree to disagree on whether we are indeed accomplishing that. Okay, so no, we don't, thank okay, thank you. So we don't need this just, it's already in, in the rules. We don't need this as a special consideration just for this show season. Is that correct, Melanie? Yes, okay. Carol Krasnowski, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I believe when Melanie read the existing rule, it said that, that judges must judge a minimum of two shows outside. This wording says judges should judge. So perhaps that's the difference. I don't have the existing rules in front of me to refer to. That is the, that's one of the differences, yes. Thank you. Okay, Rachel Anger, you're recognized. Mm-hmm. Now you're muted. Yeah, okay. I'm jumping back and forth trying to see the, the real rule. Um, this is a problem, I don't wanna, point, uh, you know, put anybody on the spot, but when we don't have the strikeout underline method, we're all confused on what's being changed here. So uh, to, to put it easily, we're changing must to should and uh, just defining the, the kilometer issue. Is that correct? That's the only changes we're making. That is correct. Thank you. Yeah, they, they, they've just specified region nine, the international division and the areas in China. Okay, so we've sort of discussed this. But we haven't had a motion. So before uh, I ask for a motion, I want it clarified that uh, the last one where it says China, the judge's area of residence is the word, not region. Okay, so Pam, do you want to make the motion to accept this? So moved. Second, please. Virtual second. Thank you, Rich. Carol, my hand yes. is still up. Okay, go ahead. All right. So we did address Region 9. Section 8C says judges residing in Region 9, Europe, and the International Division to be a minimum of two shows should be judged at least 400 kilometers away from the judge's residence in Europe or the judge's residence in the International Division for each advancement consideration. So if they go and they change A, then they're starting to, they're going to need to delete B and C. I, I, I don't understand what we're voting on. I'm confused. Pam or Ellen, would you like to clarify? 
Let me try. This is trying to be concise and put things into one area where judges, if you're double specialty or approval pending all breed, know that, gee, I live in Europe, a continent, but I cannot go outside my region of residence because this is one big continent for a region. But as long as I can go 500 kilometers away, it still counts. So we went from 400 kilometers, which was too small of a distance to 500 kilometers, which added a bit more distance. Yeah, uh, this is Gavin here. Can I clarify on the, the point about China? Yes, I go think, ahead, uh, Gavin. One, yeah, uh, Melanie, I think one of the key differences here for China is that now the uh, Chinese judges who are going through training or advancement, they, can, uh, they don't have to go outside of the country, right? So right now, uh, China is broken up into three uh, areas, uh, China East, China West, and China uh, North, I think. Um, so by adding the, the change here, so the, in the future, the, or maybe for this season, uh, the Chinese judges don't have to go outside of the country. They only have to go outside of the region. That's uh, that's one of the key differences I see in this uh, this change. Okay. Thank you, Gavin. Let's see who's next. Uh, Sharon Roy. Hi. I I just have a question, Ellen. From the change from must to should, does that mean that at some point in time, if you had somebody that did not do two out of region and you felt they were deserving, that gives you the um, ability to bring them up in the future? Yes. Okay. It's not an That's absolute. That's what I thought. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Rich Maston. You're recognized. Yeah, two things. Can I, or yeah, two things. Can I see the bottom of this? I can only see the international division. I can't see the China section. That's one. And did the uh, international division chairs and the China chair agree with the 500 kilometer. I know Pam agreed with the Europe, but I'm curious to know if international chair and China chair agreed with those kilometer recommendations. I, quite frankly, I did not ask them. I should have, that's my fault. Then, then can we get some feedback from them on this? Well, Gavin's on, he represents China. Let him, let him address it. Sorry, uh, what was the question? Uh, uh, do you mean if the 500 kilometers is sufficient? Yes. yes. Well, just 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 for the sake of this change, uh, I think for us it's uh, I think it's better defined if it goes into a different area. Right? Well, it's it's because either we have or. Two different it. area. It's either or. Oh, okay. Then you that's fine. Do, you have to do I, two I, outside of the region or two that are not less than 500 kilometers. The outside the area. Well, I, I don't see any issue with it, but okay. uh, I don't know if Russell's in, but I'm okay with it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is Russell uh, on the panelist? Um, I will bring him in. Okay, thanks, and we'll get here Russell's in input. I just, he should be here in a second. Okay. Uh, Kenny Curley, you can go ahead and uh, state your comments. Again, I want to reiterate uh, my reading of this and this consolidation of these uh, judging program rules uh, indicates to me that the primary reason for this is different sets of competition for these judges. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, um, but you know I understand the intent. And I understand the concerns by several, uh, several other board members concerning this. Um, I'd like to see clarification, for instance, uh, for let's say region nine or even China, if they were to fly to an ID location where they would certainly get different sets of competition, would that be allowed? Of course. Okay. All right, I just wanna make sure that I'd like, like to have that spelled out a little bit well, as long as, they, as long as they meet the status requirements within the judging rules. No, I understand. I understand that. 
I just wanted to make that as a clarification. If uh, they want to come to the U.S., they can. You know, it doesn't say they can't. It just says we're giving them a, a minimum of two shows, basically. Outside you, of their, we're trying to to make it so that they not maybe they don't necessarily have to fly, but if they drive, you know, if somebody drives six hours to another area or you know. To, then that's not a, a problem. You're going, you may or may not see different cats. One, four, and seven, you see the same cats a lot of times. So what happens, they can drive, but it's considered out of the area. All right, Alan, can you point out to the board um, and the people listening in the differences between what you're proposing as opposed to that is written now, as far as the requirements of these judges judging outside of the region? The number of kilometers for nine, they, I believe, I want to say, wasn't it 800 kilometers? I mean, I don't have the old rules in front of me because I didn't quite frankly. 400. Remember. It's 400 it was kilometers. 400. Okay. So we increased them actually to 500, which is basically 310 miles. Okay. That's a, in, in the United States, it would be like a six hour drive. It's drivable, but we increased them a little bit. So maybe they would get a little different look at different cats. My concern in doing this was not necessarily for the US. I was looking at region nine, the international division and China, which is not necessarily defined. I wanted to make sure, I know there are three areas in China. I wanted to make sure that these guys got out of their areas a little bit to be able to, and they don't, but they don't have to fly if they don't want to. And that's, you know, it's a financial consideration as well. Thank you, Ellen. Russell You're Webb, welcome. would you yeah. like to comment? Yes, um, I really have no problem with this for China because I, I really think they see a lot of cats and the judges so far really do like coming to America to get a different choice. So I really, the, this is okay with me. I'll agree to it. Thank you. I, I want to make just, because uh, I got the rules in front of me right now and Melanie is correct. Okay. Uh, part A is regions one through seven, uh, 8.2 B is uh, Japan and C covers uh, judges in region nine and the international division. I think the easiest fix for this so that it's, it, it doesn't change the uh, structure of the rule is the proposed wording for regions one through seven should amend 8.2A and then the next three should be under part 8.2C uh, those three could be listed as bullets A, B, and C, and then that way it would keep it in the areas. Melanie, do you agree with that? Do you have the rules? I do, and that makes a lot of sense. All right. That's all so I've been saying is we're, we're, we were going to put ourselves in a conflict with our own, with the rules as they yes. stood if we voted on what was being proposed to us because it hasn't been presented you know, with everything, taking everything into consideration. Okay, so, just so trying to clarify what we're voting on. All right, fantastic. So Pam, would you withdraw your motion, please? If you agree with that. Withdrawn. Huh? Withdrawn. Okay, thank you. All right, so I, I would like a motion uh, to amend 8.2a, the very, okay, what happened here? Okay, right. under proposed wording, judges double specialty or higher residing in one through seven uh, should judge a minimum of two shows outside the judge's region of residence or not less than 500 miles from their place of residence. So I need a motion to amend 8.2a for that one paragraph only. Rich will make the motion. Thank Daniel you. Second. Thank you, Kenny. Is there any discussion? Gavin, your hand is still up. Do you have something to say? Sorry, I'll take it down. Okay. Okay. So I'm just trying to keep the structure of the rules in, in alignment with what they are. Okay. All right. So any discussion on that motion? Is there any objection to that motion? Yes. 
Okay, uh, I'm calling for the yes votes. Everyone in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Okay, so the yes votes are Rich Maston, Carol Kresnowski, George Eigenhauser, Pam Delabar, Rachel Anger, John Kalilla, Cindy Bird, Kenny Curley, Brian Mosier, Kathy Dunham, Sharon Roy, Steve McCullough, Hayatasan. Okay, if you'll take your hands down, please. I'm calling for the no votes. I have Melanie Morgan, Kathy Calhoun, and Pam Mosier. Is there any abstentions? No votes, take your hands down. I see no abstentions. So Rachel, will you announce the vote? Uh, three no votes. One, two, three, four, five, six. 13 yes votes. Okay, that's correct then. Okay. Okay. Now I need, I will entertain a motion to amend the judging program rules 8.2C and the header would be uh, judges residing in Region 9 Europe, the International Division and, and China would be added on there. And then the next three items would be labeled bullet point A, bullet point B, and bullet point C. That would be under 8.2C. Everybody understand that? So no, I, Steve McCullough moved. I need a second. Rich will second. Thank you, Rich. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Okay, the yes votes are Brian Mosier, George Eigenhauser, Pam Delabar, Carol Kresnowski, Sharon Roy, Cindy Bird, Hayata San, Rich Maston, Kenny Curley, Rachel Anger, Kathy Dunham, and Steve McCullough. If you guys will take your hands down. Okay, those opposed, please raise your hand. So the no votes are Kathy Calhoun, Pam Mosier, Melanie Morgan, and John Kalila. You can take your hands down. Are there any abstentions? I see no abstentions. Rachel, will you announce the vote? 12 yes votes, four no votes. Okay, so the motion is ratified. Thank you, Pam, and thank you, uh, Ellen, for your work on that. Daryl? Yes. Go there, ahead, Ellen. Were, there were some uh, kilometer uh, changes to the trainee section six. I just don't know if we should be doing the same changes to those areas. Okay. It was a 6.2A and 6.2B. Okay, hang on, 6.2A. A and B. Yeah, we, we had the same thing where it was um, okay. 400, 500 miles or 400 kilometers. Which one is it, 6.2 what? 6.2A, it was a change that was passed yesterday. I can bring that up on the screen if you want. Well, I think that was, uh, oh, here it is. Okay, total of five must be outside, but not less than 500 miles from their place of residence. I think I can answer that question. Thank you, Rachel, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, that's what brought up the whole issue here is uh, the disparity between trainee and advancing judges. So for trainee, that is what we wanted. And advancing judges, we revisited uh, 
okay. for that very reason. Okay. okay, and it was the number of, of uh, super, okay. So that's true for kilometers and miles. So it stays 500 and 400 in section six. Okay. Okay, thank you, Rachel, for making that clarification. So are we uh, finished uh, with the judging program rules from Pam and Ellen? Okay, Rachel, I think our next special order of business is uh, dealing with uh, the tabled motion um, for regional wins. Number 22? Uh, well, uh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> originally number 22. Yeah, originally number 22. And uh, so, Melanie? Uh, yes. Uh, we had two issues that we were looking at um, that we wanted to address. We did not disagree with the motion that was passed about all the regional wins, but we were concerned about the uh, split season kittens that, that might have um, really earned the title of RW already. And, um, and then our international division um, advisor brought up the point of the fact that China is actually opening up. So we were concerned about divisions. So it was easy to address the division issue because in Pam's first uh, motion, she purposely did not mention divisions, which then by definition allows them to um, have their regional wins. So the uh, proposed motion now reads, and I don't know, uh, regional wins for all regions will be suspended for the show season 2020 through 2021, with the exception of split season kittens from the 2019-2020 season, who have earned enough points to meet or exceed the points earned by the 25th best kitten in, I should have said in their region for the 2019-2020 season. The split season kittens will be awarded the regional award title for the 2019-2020 season. The split season kittens will be given the placement based off where the points earned would place them in their 2019 2019-2020 regional rankings. There will be no change in ranking for the existing 2019-2020 kittens. There are only three kittens that uh, are affected by this, by the way. And I think I sent those all to the board um, list earlier. I think it was regions one, nine, and five. Um, so. Yep, we got that. Thank you, Melanie, for sending those yep. out. Okay, uh, I... So th this basically, we, we uh, reconsidered the motion that was passed. So this is a different motion or an amended motion. So uh, I'll consider this as an amendment. It's actually replacing it, but uh, uh, let's, let's just treat it as an amendment. So <laughs> all right. I need a motion. Kathy Calhoun moves. Thank you. George, seconds. Thank you, George. Okay, so it's uh, open for debate. Kenny Curley, you're recognized. Yeah, um, I'm totally against any restrictions. Uh, but having said that, um, our regions, uh, yeah, you, you, you've made China, I guess, a special uh, exception in the international divisions. But again, you're hurting our clubs. Um, not allowing them to have the option to at least hold, uh, uh, you know, a competition to allow our, our cats after they grand to continue to be shown potentially is going to be a big loss of income for shows that can go on in different areas of the United States and, uh, and, and the other regions. I understand the reasoning uh, why this was brought up by the Region 9 director. It's a totally different ball game over there in Europe. Uh, I know that we have four shows planned in my region. And uh, let's go back to the show. Let me go ahead and go and just tell you, I had a conversation with Cotton States uh, yesterday, last night, after this, we tabled this. And they have told me flat out that they have some at, you know, out of state people that are waiting for a decision on this. That if we don't allow at least the very option for each region to decide on their own, 
whether or not they want to hold regional awards, um, they'll pull their entries. And I'm talking about more than kittens. I mean, they have eight grands right now entered, as, well as I recall. That may be more than that. But what is the incentive for grand champions to go to a show? Uh, it makes no sense to me. And quite frankly, I'm kind of offended that the board as a whole, no offense to anybody personally, uh, I would rather ask my clubs what they want to do uh, rather than have the board decide for them. We've already taken away national wins, uh, national breed wins. I fully supported that uh, given the crisis that we're entering, but we're into a period of time that we may open up. And, but let the regions decide, let our clubs decide. Last time I checked the constitution, the clubs are our members. I want my club to decide. I don't want the board to you know, cut, the, cut our nose off in spite of our, despite our face. It, it makes no sense to me. So I want our clubs to decide that. I want my region clubs to decide that. They may decide not to do it. But it's going to be lost income because people, once they grand those cats, what is their incentive to come back to the next show? Thank you, Kenny. Like Kenny, I also got emails uh, from Cotton States last night, and uh, I also got emails uh, uh, from Big Houston, and they're very concerned about this. So, Rachel Anger, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree with most of the things Kenny said. In fact, I had them on my list to, to speak. So um, I'm going to vote no for this, even though if we're stuck with no regional awards, I do support this. But um, yesterday I spoke about uh, being against regional awards and in favor of a third option, which we don't have. Um, and so I voted no for this. I'm going to vote no for it again, uh, because just like the issue that we had about changing the qualifying rings, I think this is a decision our constituents should be making. Everything that, that I'm hearing from them is that even if it's a reduced award, uh, it's going to be understood. This was a special show season and people want something to uh, work towards. So I, I'm still voting no. I'm keeping my uh, uh, no vote in intact. And even though I support this change, it will be a, a no vote uh, unilaterally for doing away with regional awards. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. George Eigenhauser, you're recognized. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody that there were two motions that we passed on this subject yesterday, and we reconsidered one of them. The first motion yesterday, the one we're reconsidering, was whether to do away with the regional awards. The second motion we passed yesterday, which we did not vote to reconsider, is that in lieu of regional awards, the regions can do their own individual recognition if they choose to do so. As far as I'm concerned, that motion is still intact. So if this motion passes, it will not bar the regions from holding some sort of awards or recognition for cats in the region if they choose to do so. The only question is, do they get an RW after their name or not? And because of the extraordinary circumstances we're under, the choice is really an RW with an asterisk or no RW at all. And in this instance, I think it would be better for the purpose of, of protecting the sensibilities of people who have earned RWs in other seasons, that rather than an RW with an asterisk, let the regions do their own awards like we voted yesterday, but not attach the RW title to it. Thank you, George. Pam Delabar, you're recognized. Sorry about no screen. Um, the uh, laptop froze up again. The reason this is at the board, Kenny, is because it's in the show rules and only the board can change the show rules during a show season. The Constitution gives that ability to the board to make and enforce these show, season, show rules. The clubs cannot vote to unilaterally say, yes, we're going to do regional awards and get the RW or not. That's why I originally brought this to the attorney to see what was going to happen. There's no parity among the regions. 
As a matter of fact, your region and Region 6 have the highest rates of COVID in the United States. Your highest state is Georgia, where you're going to be having the, the Cotton State Show right there in the Atlanta area. That is my concern, is that to make sure that we have a cat fancy in May to come back to, to be careful with our people. I guess I'm sort of gobsmacked. I thought we used to do this to compare our breeding programs with other people's breeding programs when we went to shows. I also thought we did this for fun. Um, I have gone to FIFA shows and have shown or carried cats to, for judging. And I am not allowed to have my name on a cat in FIFA. If I did, I would be brought up against the disciplinary commission and barred forever being in that association because I happen to be a CFA judge. But be that as it may, it's fun. I think we need to rethink our motivation behind what we're doing with these awards. I'm concerned about no parity. I'm concerned about dumbing down the title. Um, I guess that's it before I go any further. Okay, Kenny Carley, you're recognized. Yeah, no, I understand your concerns, uh, Pam. Um, but again, yeah, the board ha has the responsibility to change show rules. But I'm bringing it up on behalf of my clubs. I, as I said, you're, you're looking for parity. I mean, how is life parity? We, we cannot create that. Um, we need to be able to uh, service our people and our people really need to be supported in this. We've already heard from uh, uh, several clubs that have concerns and you're gonna cut their, their uh, potential income off because they can't even be recognized. I mean, we can set minimums which could also serve as an incentive for, for clubs to have shows. I mean, there are events that are going on. I mean, the last time I saw Major League Baseball is having their, uh, their games right now, you know, to, to determine a World Series winner. So we can't have anything. All these other organizations, they're, put, they're sending out national wins. We've already taken away uh, the national wins. Now you want to take away the next level? and just become a, a, you know, a grand champion factory, you know, to me, that's really going to hurt our clubs. And I really don't want to experiment to make sure that I'm right or that I'm wrong. I think we need to leave it, leave it in the hands of each of the regions. And I think it's uh, regardless of the rules, as far as scoring is concerned. We've already decided beforehand that we were going to allow regional wins to come up. Now we have people that are gonna pull their cats from a show that's already been established and already filled. And I think that's the wrong thing to do. Shelly. So earlier, um, I'm weighing in only because George stated that there was a second motion that had been passed, but his paraphrase of that motion, um, I don't think matched exactly what the motion was that was passed. And the second motion that was passed was individual regions may establish a separate system of recognition for their regions for 2021. However, there will be no permanent title resulting from these special awards. And I wanted to point out that if you allowed regional awards to continue at the discretion of the region, that doesn't stop the regions who choose not to have them from having the special recognition. So there is um, symbiosis between the second motion that was already passed and then whatever you choose to do with this uh, first motion that's under reconsideration. Thank you, Shelley. Brian Mosier, you're recognized. Yeah, I'm kind of feeding off what Pam said. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for regional awards and I'm all for national awards and everything, but uh, this year is totally different. And how many people, let's say there's, I don't know how many kittens are entered at Cotton State, but how many of those cats, kittens 
are going for regional awards. A lot of people go to the shows to hopefully make a final here and there. Seems like all the time we're always looking for the people to get awards who want regional awards and national awards. Majority of the people don't get regional and national awards. So I'm not, I, I honor those people that, that work that hard and get those, those awards. I have nothing against them. But the, the, truth of, the truth of the matter is that there's very few people, if you talk about kittens, championship and premiership, they're actually out there trying to get a regional national award. Thank you, Sharon Roy, you're recognized. <laughs> yeah, last night after we finished, I had several emails and text messages from people in my region that were really upset that we were eliminating any regional award. So my question, I think, is more for Shelley. Can we, as a board, set a point minimum just for this year so that all regions are on the same baseline? I'm sorry, can you restate the question for me? Yeah, can we, as a board, set a minimum limit or a minimum point limit for this year to award regional wins um, that would make it equal amongst all the regions? System-wide system-wide thank you well there's the as i already briefed the board the board's in charge of the show rules and um the show rules set minimums for all different kinds of things so i don't see that as um a concern the board can do that as long as it's a show rule that's my position thank you shelly uh Brian Mosier, you're next on the list. You already talked. So Kathy Calhoun, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. I wonder if we can split the, this seems there's two decisions here in this motion and maybe that's where it's adding complexity. Can we just have a motion that addresses the split season kittens for 2019, 2020? Those kittens could not earn any more points. They would have aged out before shows started the next season. So for those few, those kittens that would have qualified for a regional win based on the points that they were awarded in 2019, 2020, can they be awarded placement and a regional win, a, a, a regular regional win title for the 2019, 2020 season? That addresses the split kittens and let's have a separate discussion about what we do in the, relative to regional awards for 2020-2021. Okay, Kathy, so you make a valid point. So uh, what we can do is that this is uh, basically a reconsideration of not having national wins and then a motion about awarding split season kittens. So the parliamentary procedure to do that is to divide the question uh, into two separate issues. So uh, if somebody wants to make that motion, we will have what is under reconsideration uh, as a separate motion. This motion would be a separate motion. So the, I, I, Shelley, am I correct? Uh, we can divide the question. You can, um, you did say national awards, so it's regional awards that we're talking about. Oh yeah, about. okay, all right, sorry. Sorry, so I need a motion to divide the question. Can I make the motion? Yes. I make the motion. Okay. Rachel, second. Second. Rich, okay. thank you so much. So. Uh, the, motion, one. the motion up for debate is to to divide the question. All right. Is there? Let, let's. If if you got a, a comment to make about dividing the question, keep your hand up. Otherwise, take your hand down. Is it warm enough? Mm -hmm. Pam Mosier, do you have a comment about dividing the question? Yes, I'm confused. Okay. Um. We brought back this um, motion for dividing um, because of the split season um, kittens, but there was never any reconsideration on the motion for um, doing away with the um, regional wins. We had already voted that we weren't going to have regional wins. And this that's, was, like, that's, under region. that's under consideration, and this was brought up as an amendment. We're actually splitting it and dividing. That was an amendment, too. It, 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 Steve, it was a reconsideration. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. It, so okay. that motion is still on the table. Okay. This basically was amending not having that. And, and we never, that 
it's still on the table. It's, it's, this is just superseding it because we treated this as an amendment. So now Kathy wants to, to split it into two questions. The parliamentary rule is to divide the question. So we make it two voting issues. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I just don't understand it. it I mean, I, did we vote yesterday to do, I, to do a way to reconsider not having regional awards, period? It was reconsidered and then tabled. It's still an active issue. Once we get this issue resolved, then we will go back and do the reconsideration on whether we're going to do away with regional awards or not. Because the way that I heard it yesterday was is that we were going to come back and that Kenny had, had wanted to reconsider because he wanted all kitten wins to be done and to have the split season kittens. So uh, there was never anything about all of them. I'm, I'm just confused. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm confused. I understand. And here's the problem. When people start adding in issues that aren't amendments, to motions and then everybody gets confused. The motion that we passed was that we would not allow regional or divisional wins, okay? And that was reconsidered. And then all this discussion came in about it, it only applies to kittens or whatever. Nothing was resolved and that's why it was sent to Melanie to bring back a proposal, okay? That was tabled. So the, the reconsider was tabled. So that motion is still active. We consider this as an amendment. Kathy thinks it should be voted on in two things. So the correct procedure is to divide the question. This will be handled as a motion and we'll dispose of it. Then we will go back and do the reconsideration on what we're gonna do with regional wins. Okay. Thank I don't you. know how to explain it any better no, than that. That's, that's fine, thank you. Okay, all right, so. We, we need to vote on uh, dividing the question. If you're in favor of dividing the question, please raise your hand. Daryl, Daryl, did you open this for discussion? Kenny, I just called the motion to divide the question. That's what we're voting on. Okay. Once that's done, then, we will, then we'll open up discussion on this issue on the screen. Thank you. So if you're in favor of dividing the question, please raise your hand. So the yes votes are Kenny Curley, Melanie Morgan, Pam Delabar, Rich Maston, Cindy Bird, Kathy Dunham, George Eigenhauser, Rachel Anger, Sharon Roy, Carol Krasnowski, Steve McCullough, Kathy Calhoun, Brian Mosier, John Kalila, Hayatasan. If you're opposed, Everybody take your hand down. If you're opposed to dividing the question, please raise your hand. I see no, no votes. Abstentions? Pam. Okay, Pam's an abstention. Kenny, I didn't see you or Melanie vote. Oh, I, I voted yes to uh, divide the question. Okay, well, your hand was not up. Uh, on the screen that I have. Yeah, Melanie? it was. You just missed it. Okay, Mine was up. And yeah. yours was up. Yes. Okay. Rachel, will you announce the vote on the motion to divide the question? 15 yes, one abstention. Okay, thank you so much. So the question is divided. So uh, we will handle this portion first, and that is whether we're going to award the split season kittens a regional title for the 19 20 show season. Melanie. Okay. Uh, help me, Daryl, because I'm this whole procedure stuff confuses me. Um, yeah. Okay. So when I brought this up yesterday, I didn't want to even bring up the whole regional thing that we'd already voted on. So I just wanted to make sure that those three regional kittens got what they had earned. So is there something procedurally that we should have, I should have done? I mean, no, I don't no. know why we're even reconsidering. Well, because so. we, we passed the motion, all right? And okay. then you- So you, I just wanna make sure that I fixed it because I don't no, wanna, I feel like I, yeah. No, you didn't do anything wrong, okay? You, want, right. you What you did was correct. You brought back basically an amendment to a tabled motion that we reconsidered, okay? 
And so right now, regional wins stand because we've not disposed okay. of that motion. So right now we're considering, uh, are we going to give those three kittens a regional win title on the 1920 show season? That's what this motion is all about. Okay, so you didn't do anything wrong. Kenny Curley, you're recognized. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I, I never made a, a, a motion uh, just for clarification that uh, kittens should be scored. I just, it was then a discussion. Now, uh, let me just say this. I, I don't think we should touch regional awards at all. If anything, maybe perhaps an amendment to make an option to people or, or regions and areas as to whether or not they can have regional awards. And uh, that way we've changed nothing uh, at this point, but now this is exactly going to impact our regions and our areas worldwide. So I understand the why we're splitting this out and what have you, but again, you're creating an, uh, I understand it's, a, it's, it's a, not an even playing field, but it's just as harmful to those areas that can open up. Okay, but, but Kenny, we're, we're, all we're talking about right now is are we gonna give these three kittens a regional win title? So that's what the debate should be. That's what's germane for this debate. Are we gonna award these three kittens a regional win title? Okay, that's what we're, that's what we're debating here. Rachel Angle, you're recognized. Just for clarity, without confusing that issue, can you state what the uh, second part of the motion will be, just so we're all sure? Well, uh, it, it's two questions. So the, the second question then, okay. The second question, we will go back to the motion that we tabled was to do, uh, we passed the motion that no regional or division win, win titles for 2021 would be awarded. That was the motion. It was reconsidered. Several options were brought up. Kenny's about, you know, giving the kittens thing, but nothing was amended. So that, that was tabled after we reconsidered it. Understood. I just wanted to be 100% clear yes. that everyone understands the two parts of this. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so right now, our debate is on those three kittens that are split season kittens and should they be given a regional win title for 2019-2020? So Kathy Calhoun, you're recognized. Okay, so I was just, just for the simplification, and I don't know if this is correct, but if you look at the motion that's the action item that's on the screen, and you delete everything until you get to split, after you split season kittens, from 2019, that's the essence of what we're voting on, right? Just, that's correct. That's it. So if those you take that whole, yeah. Those three kittens, that's all this, that's all all this motion is. is. Thank you, yep. George Eigenhauser. Here's my problem. If we vote on the split season kittens first and say we're gonna score them in 2019, 2020, and then the motion to eliminate regional awards for 2020, 21 fails, Shouldn't the split season kittens have been scored in the show season? No, that's not what they said. When, when, when those I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, from my standpoint, okay. if we're going to give those kittens an award, I would prefer the award be in this show season rather than in the previous show season. But if we don't do regional awards for this show season, then I would be amenable to giving it to them in the previous show season. So that's my conundrum, is I'm being asked to vote on what year to put the kittens in before we decide whether we're having regional awards this year or not. If we're having regional awards this year, I would vote to put them in this year. If we're not having regional awards this year, I would vote to put them in last year. And, and so I, I have a real hard time voting on what I see as the second part of the motion first. Okay, so you're, you're okay with giving a kitten a regional win and a year where they didn't score one point. Because that's what our show rules normally say. When you're eligible for entry, that's when your eligibility ends. And we're amending the show rules by all of these motions. Right. I'm just saying 
from my, my way of thinking, okay. if the split season kittens are going to get an award, my preference would be the current show season. My second choice would be the previous show season. Okay, well, uh, and here's what you can do, George. Uh, if, if, if we vote and this passes and we go back and, and do the original motion, you can do a reconsideration on this and we can move them to the show season you think they should be competing in. Is that agreeable? Well, it is what it is. Okay, all right. Uh, Kenny, you've already talked twice. Kathy Calhoun? Okay, I can understand what George is saying, but the the number of points that those kittens were able to accumulate in 2019, 2020, would clearly, just so we'll know, with, if we get regional awards in 2021, those kittens are likely to be best in their region because they had a huge advantage because of the year they were able to compete in. I get it that that's how the rule is. I get it with the split season kittens, that's the way the rule is. But just for us to have that point of view that those kittens accumulated a lot of points and they're likely to be best in the regions. Thank you. Uh, Aileen, would you bring Monty Phillips in? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because he is uh, the show rules guru and he made a comment in the chat and I'd like for him to address the board. Okay. He is in. Great. Thank you, Monty. Can you uh, address this? You made a note in the chat. There we go. Now I can talk. Yeah, the, the first point I wanted to make was, and I think George has already made this too, we're talking about awards that would be given to kittens in the 2019-2020 show season not the, the current show season. If we pass the, what you're talking about right now. Yes. So I also agree that if George wanted to reconsider and move them to this season, if we decide to keep regional wins, that would make more sense too. Okay. Anything else, Monty? Not right now. Okay, thank you. Just stay on just in case we need you again. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Carol Krasnowski, you're recognized. Yes, I have to agree with George. I think the order of these two motions should be reversed. We need to first decide, are we doing regional awards this year or not? And then, based on that decision, we determine what to do with the split season. Studies. Okay, then somebody make a motion. Somebody make a motion to table this, and we will take up the first order of the questions. Rachel okay. moves to table this. Okay, second. Steve. Carol seconds. Okay, so this motion uh, is to be tabled. And Aileen, can you put up uh, the first motion that we're reconsidering that was passed yesterday, one of two that uh, Pam Delabar presented? Uh, yes. Just give me a wait, 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 wait. But while she's looking it up, can we vote on the motion to table? Yes, thank you, George. All those in favor of, is there anybody opposed to tabling this motion? Okay, I see no objections to the table, so the motion is tabled. We'll take up the first part of the divided question, and then we'll bring, we'll take from the table this, this motion after the other one is disposed of. Okay. All right, so the action item that, uh, Rachel, can you go back and, because we amended this motion before we passed it. Back to yesterday? Yes. Wow. Um, well, we added, uh, can you make the screen a, a little bit bigger or move up the action item, Aileen? Um, wait, which, which action item do you we're, want? We Number want one. one. At the bottom of the screen is one. That's the one that we're talking about. Oh, okay. There, there we go. go. Is that big enough? <clears throat> so yesterday's would have been regional slash divisional awards comma, for all regions slash divisions. Hang, hang on a minute, Rachel. Allie, you this is Melanie's motion. I want yesterday's motion. Oh, all right. There were I've two motions, right one okay. and two I'm, by Pam. Yep. Let me just get that one. Hold on one second. It'd be item number 22. 
There and we go. Just make that bigger. There you go. It's good. Yeah. I have my reading glasses on. So regional slash divisional awards, comma, for all regions slash divisions, comma, will be suspended for the show season 2020 to 2021. Okay. And so that was passed. And then we uh, made a, we had a successful motion to reconsider and we couldn't come to uh, a final resolution. So it was tabled. And so part two of the question is what Melanie presented that we started off with. So now uh, this is open for debate. George Eigenhauser. I think we've gotten enough feedback from China that we should take divisional out and just okay. make it the regional awards. Okay, so you're making that an amendment? Yes, sir. Okay, so George's move that we strike division. Melanie second. And Melanie seconds, okay. Uh, any discussion on George's amendment? Pam Mosier? No, 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 I'm trying to take my hand down. Okay, Sharon Roy. Kenny Curley. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Is there any objection to striking division uh, after regional? Hearing no objection, division is divisional is stricken from uh, the motion. So, Rachel, will you now read what the amended motion is, or the amendment? The amended motion is. Sorry. I think we're back to the original motion. Regional yes. award. Yes comma, for all regions, comma, will be suspended <laughs> <laughs> for show season 2020-2021. All then right, I'll thank make you. My comment, please vote no, or, uh, okay. yeah, please vote no so that these guys can have something this show season. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Well, just a point, even if you vote yes, they'd have something this show season because regions can establish their own awards. But not official. It just wouldn't carry the RW title. Yes, Pam Mosier, you're recognized. Yes, I think that Pam Delabar made some excellent comments. I totally agree with those. And the comparison of the cat fancy to the NBA or any of the professional sports is, I mean, they test daily for COVID. There's no comparison there. Okay, Kathy Dunham, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, I totally agree with Kenny Curley on this. Our clubs have the right to uh, weigh in on this. The poll that I did in our region was overwhelming that they wanted the RW title as something to work towards. Uh, I received as many texts and emails last night as uh, I'm sure the other regional directors did. Uh, they are just not in favor of doing away with this. So I will vote no on this. Thank you. Thank Kenny you. Curley, you're recognized. Yeah, I'll keep this brief. Um, I would like to uh, allow us to continue with uh, regional wars as an option and set a point minimum um, where we can have shows. And uh, I think that uh, we, we need not to lose sight of who elected us to office. I want to give them the option. Thank you. Uh, Pam Delaware, you recognized? Thank you. I'm sorry, I still don't have a picture. We don't have parity among our regions. We don't have parity within our regions. How can we expect to give regional awards when we do not have the access, the ability to access the shows in our own regions? That is what originally brought this all to, to my attention, is that there's several regions that also include Canada. There's no crossing the borders. Uh, region three actually includes Mexico and we know how that border goes. Um, it just, it's not, it, it doesn't even have the basic elements 
of any parity whatsoever. That is my concern. And I think that, that it's an empty RW if you get it when we have such uneven access to get to our shows. Thank you, Pam. Anyone else want to comment? Kathy Dunham. Sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. Kenny Curley. Yeah, this is my second time speaking. I, again, I understand uh, Ms. Delabar's concern, but I'm a much different region than, than Europe. And again, I think that uh, if, if we leave it alone or at least create an option for regions, she can do what she wants. I would like to allow my clubs to decide on what they want. I don't want any other regional director or any other board member, not that I don't respect your opinions on this issue. I'd rather have my clubs within my region make that decision. Thank you, Kenny. Rachel Anger, you recognize? Thank you uh, for the last time. Um, you know, even in, in the best of times, we have never had a living, level playing field. Depends on where you live. If you live within a mile of a border, that's going to have a great uh, uh, impact on your ability to get a regional win. Um, these are COVID times, so we're adding uh, uh, tying people's arm and leg behind their back and still expecting them to, to show. So I think the people that are going out of their way to uh, show during these very difficult times should deserve something. I mean, we've taken away national awards. That, that would have been uh, completely unfair, but let's give them something, something to work for. Thank you, Rachel. Sharon Roy, you're recognized. Um, I have to say that I have very mixed feelings because I have a whole area of my region and a large area of my region that can't show. However, I also know that I have a large area that can show and can easily go to region four and region seven. So I kind of have to support what Kenny said even though it goes against my personal grain. Okay, uh, Rich Mastin, you're recognized. Yeah, this, this question is for Shelly. Um, does the board have the right to give the regions the option or is it one or the other? Give me 30 seconds to look up the research that I sent the board because I just wanna look at one of the wordings on that. Um, I'm pretty sure that the board can give the option to the regions. Um, nothing in that I recall from my research said that you have that any awards have to be 100% uniform. And in fact, they're not because the regional awards are based on the points secured in that region. Um, but I'm going to um, glance at my work and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Uh, Pam Delabar, you're recognized for your second round. Yes, and this will be my last. I'm sure you'll be happy about that. <laughs> this is not about Region 9. This is about CFA. This is about Regions 1 through 7, Region 8, which has had a show with 50-some-odd cats. We need to have some integrity to our awards. And that's when I see the, the reduction of, of more and more qualifications to get these permanent awards. That is my concern, and it's a CFA concern. What can exhibitors go for if they can't go for a breed win, a national win, or region, uh, uh, regional win? They can go for grand champions, grand premieres, Grands of distinction, distinguished merit. I think those are very important awards and, and should not be ignored. But this is not just a Region 9 question. This is a CFA question because I'm going to have shows. I'm going to have three in the next eight weeks. But this is, this is a highly concerned that we're going to be putting people uh, in danger. That's it. Okay, Kathy Calhoun, you're recognized. Hey, yes, sir. Uh, 
so didn't we, wasn't part of the rationale of not having national wins this year due to the parity issue that we weren't going to have shows broadly. And so folks were disadvantaged by having, you know, depending on where they lived. So we decided not to do national wins. So I just need some clarification here on this regional win discussion. You can go, say if someone went to one of the big shows, they can use all of those points so long as it's in regions one through seven in their region and never and, and, and accumulate a lot of points. What happens if there's no show in their region? Well, we have minimums. Okay. I thought you had to show within your, is, is that going away that you have to show within your region? I believe that's part of the show rules. Okay. Monty? Yeah, two things. First of all, a cat could earn points in any region, so that's okay. And I believe, I'm going back to look real quick <coughs> to see if you already did that. Somebody uh, just put in the chat that we waived. Yeah, we National <laughs> Regional <laughs> Divisional Awards scoring exhibiting in the region of final assignment shall be waived. You already yeah. passed that. All right, thank you. Would that apply to next year too? Or do we this, have to address that? This, this current season, right, Monty? Correct. Yes, okay. current season. Thank you. Uh, Shelly, you wanted to address uh, Rich's question? I do. Um, so when I looked um, and was asked to brief this issue, I looked at the Constitution first, which said that the show rules and show standards um, would be set by the board. And then I looked at the show rules and, um, and the show rules specifically say that the cats are going to be able to compete on a national, regional, and divisional level. And so the current show rules expect that the cats will be able to compete on a regional level. And, um, and so when I'm looking at your current show rules, it seems to me that it lends, lends credence that a cat should be able to compete regionally, whatever's happening in that region. And it isn't um, against other cats per se. Those regional awards are designed to be specific to that region. And then I look further and I see that uh, the regional awards um, are at the discretion that some regional awards are in your show rules already at the discretion of the region, such as agility award. And it could be that the a uh, region says, we're not even gonna give agility awards. Now that creates an unfair situation you might presume on, on agility awards because not all regions are offering them. But the point is that the regions can do that. And so um, I think that you can specifically, I think the question was, can the region um, have the right to determine whether or not to give regional awards? And I think the answer is yes, because the precedent has been set in the agility awards. Um, and so the regional award, when that title goes on to a certificate is saying what happened with them in their region. And so to me, it is dovetails nicely to simply say that um, you all, the only show rule you would have to change to give the regions the ability to give their own regional awards is the same note that you have already in the show rules that says regional slash divisional slash Hawaii agility award are at the discretion of the regional director, um, but will go no more than 10 deep in any cat earning the award, et cetera, is simply to add another sentence to that that says that the regional awards are, all regional awards are at the discretion of the regional director for this show season. Um, and that is how you would perhaps get to the place where people are trying to get. Um, but in any event, there is precedence to leave awards up to the region itself. And this is about the region. The regional awards are specific to that region. And that's uh, my comments about what I've seen. 
Rich, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it does, um, but it may lead me to some other questions that um, may be of concern. So uh, I'm just, I just need a little time to think through this and get some responses from Shelly and others, maybe Monty and George. So if I'm from Region 4 and our region is not going to recognize regional wins, and I decide to go to Regions 1 and six and seven, and I have enough points to receive a regional award in all three of those regions did agree to have regional awards. Where do I claim my regional win? Your region of residence. Yeah. Okay, but my region of residence is not going to um, accept regional wins then you're going to get a lot of phony transfers and co-owners okay region is shifting. You'll, yeah, okay. Need, you'll need a new co-owner in region six or whatever region and then you'll claim it there okay now i'm, I'm fine, fine with that I, i'm fine i'm not fine with all the transfers and that I, i'm fine knowing in advance that if i'm from region four or whatever region could be region two region nine that made a determination they are not going to recognize regional wins in advance before I begin my show season. Because what I want to avoid is any liability issues that CFA may have from people out there showing saying, hey, nobody told me that I wasn't going to earn my regional win when it says right in the Constitution that my cat is going to be scored for regional win. So as long as we, if that's the direction this is going to go, and I sense it could, come down to the giving the regions the right based on what Kenny was saying and I believe that's what Pam Mosier's uh, upcoming motion may be uh, we need to make this extremely clear on what each region is going to do well in advance okay still have my hand up because I wanted to respond to that yep go ahead Shelly so the Constitution does not state that um, regional awards are going to be given. The Constitution says that the executive board shall from time to time establish show rules and show standards. And then it says the CFA sponsored awards program will include procedures, policies and awards to be listed as part of those show rules. So that's all the Constitution says. It doesn't say that there's going to be a regional award. The, show rules which is completely under the purview of this board is what sets forth are we going to have uh regional awards or not do the regions get to have the right to make a decision whether to have them or not so it's all contained within the show rules themselves um that's my only comment so i think that we did away with national wins why would it be any different to disallow regional wins it's an award it's in the it's in the show rules, and the board has the right to amend those show rules. Is that correct? That's correct. There's no nothing stopping you from making that decision if that's what the board wants. I mean, okay. there's arguments on both sides. Sure, I understand that. So, George Eigenhauser, you're recognized? Yeah, and I just want to agree with something that Rich mentioned in passing, and that is if we do decide to make it optional for the regions this year, I'd want that election to be as early as possible so people know when they're showing, whether they're going to be awards or not. I don't want people making the decision in April. Okay, thank you, George. I think we've just about beat this to death. Does uh, anyone want to have any closing statements before we vote on this motion? So, uh, Rachel, will you please read the motion again? I want everybody to fully understand what we're voting for here. Um, I did have one closing comment all over. Okay. My no, okay, go ahead. So the motion on its face doesn't talk about it being discretionary. If we decide to do that, that would be a different motion. Correct. So voting on exactly what it says. That's Regional correct. awards, comma, for all regions, comma, will be suspended for show season 2020 through 2021. Yes. And did you have a, a additional comment to make? 
Uh, that was it. That we're oh, not okay. voting on on the discretionary nature of that rule. We're just exactly. voting in space right now. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's let's vote on this. So all those in favor of the motion that the secretary just read to us, please raise your hand. And this will suspend all regional awards for this current show season if you vote yes for this. I want you to understand what you're voting for. Minute. Oh, this, Daryl, I'm sorry. This will suspend, did you say? That's what the motion is, Pam. Regional okay. awards for all regions will be suspended basically for the current show season. There will be no regional wins if this motion passes. Okay, everybody, everybody clear. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, so the yes votes are George Eigenhauser, Brian Mosier, Pam Delabar, Melanie Morgan, John Kalila, Kathy Calhoun, Pam okay. Mosier, Yukiko Hayata, and Steve McCullough. Okay, please take your hand down. Okay, uh, all those opposed to the motion, please raise your hand. Okay, so the no votes, uh, Kenny Curley. Rachel Anger, Kathy Calhoun, Carol Krasnowski, Cindy Bird, Rich Maston. Daryl, I'm not a no. If my hand was up, it was by error. Who identify yourself? Oh, Kathy Calhoun. Okay. So are you a no vote then? No, I'm a I'm a voting for no regional. Awards. So you're, vote, you're voting for the motion, which will yes, suspend. I was, I was a yes. Okay, so you're a yes vote. Yeah. You, you got that noted, Rachel? Yeah. So the no votes, Kenny Curley, Rachel Anger, Kathy Dunham, Carol Krasnowski, Cindy Bird, and Rich Maston. Okay, so will you uh, give us the vote, Rachel? You need to ask for abstentions. Oh yeah, abstentions, sorry. Okay, I do not have a vote from Sharon Roy. Sharon, are you an abstention? I'm an abstention, I raised my hand for abstention. Okay, Rachel and Kenny, your hands are up. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Are you an abstention, Rachel? No, I just lowered it. Oh, okay. All right. So can you uh, report the vote? Nine yes, six no, one abstention. Okay, so the motion is ratified. There will be no regional awards uh, for the 2021 season. Okay, so... Uh, so we need to take from the table Melanie's motion about the split season kittens. Can you bring that up, Aline? Yes, <clears throat> I'll be right, uh, hold on one second. Okay, so this is uh, the part two of the divided question. And this is basically uh, what George wanted clarified. He wanted the first motion. So there are no regional wins. So the cat cannot get a regional win for this show season. So if you're gonna award a split season kitten from last year uh, over through this year, then this motion is the only motion in order to do that. So George, you're recognized. Yes, and I support the current motion. Um, my only concern was which season would be a better place to put them. If it's not this season, then I'm in support of, of giving the awards in the yes. prior season. And thank you for uh, bringing that to our attention so we could switch those uh, parts of the divided question. Is there any other discussion? Okay, is there any objection to the adoption of awarding these three kittens 
a 2019-2020 regional placing according to what's on the screen. Okay, seeing no objection, the motion is ratified. So those three kittens will, uh, Allie in the central office uh, will take care of that. Yes, we will take care of that. Thank you very much. Okay, now, uh, Pam Mosier, I believe you want to bring up something. No, I withdraw it now because there's no regional awards. Okay. Okay, all right. So, uh, Rachel, do we have any other unfinished, uh, unfinished business or special items that we needed to bring up? Does Gavin or the ID committee have something they wanted to bring up on this topic? Well, I, I, we, we eliminated, uh, there, there'll be divisional wins okay. because that, that was taken out of the motion. Okay, so I think so we I, uh, have I all of our unfair. unfinished business uh, completed. Okay. okay, thank you, Rachel. Uh, are there any other committees that didn't uh, send a report that would like to report to the board? Uh, Kenny Carley? Yeah, I, I spoke with Cindy Bird about an issue uh, as far as uh, sending uh, grant certificates um, overseas instead of mailing them, uh, emailing them so that they can print them. I just wanted to ask Cindy uh, if, if uh, has there been any, any action on that? Yes, Kenny, I worked with Aileen. She said that was no problem. Okay, do we need a motion in order to do that or is that just procedural for central? That's procedural for central office. There's no point in us getting, we don't need to micromanage Aileen's job. No, no, I'm not saying that we should, Daryl. All I'm saying yeah. is I'd like to inform them that they can get them now. Thank you. Sure. So wait, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> um, I don't recall having that conversation. Maybe we did, or maybe I misunderstood. Are you talking about grand certificates that happened throughout the year? Yes. Sending them electronically. Okay, then that that's not something we can automate. I mean, we can do it, but we there is programming involved. So that it's not something we can do automatically. Right, Other you, than physically printing them out, scanning them, sending them, that type of thing. So there would be a monetary savings in that? Well, there may be a monetary savings by not printing them and not mailing them, but there will be a larger cost to put the programming in effect to cause that to happen. I, it sounds like you want something similar to how when a cat is registered, an a certificate is automatically sent out, a PDF, electronic, correct? So when well, we would bring- Well, something similar to that, or you, you, do, you actually do the, the printing of the certificate. Correct. And then you insert it into an envelope. Right. And then it's, mail it. Once, yes, once that Once that is printed, or you can print it on less expensive paper, could you not just scan it and send it via email. Well, yeah, we can scan it, but now you're talking yet additional staff time for somebody to scan it, send it, separate them out. Let me, let me, let's, let me talk about it. Yeah, James. check out the okay. cost. All right. Okay, so that's sort of new business. Any, anything else under new business? So um, I All guess right. I, under new business. Who who has her uh, Kenny Curley? No. I, oh, go ahead. Kenny's hands up. All right, Shelly, go ahead. Kenny's not responding. Um, never mind. Okay. Uh, Al Elaine or Rachel or Cindy Bird. Uh, I want to know. How are we going to notify the clubs on the agreement? Because I got uh, Cotton States wrote me last night. They want to see a copy of what we passed yesterday about COVID uh, rules that were passed by the board. Uh, they want to make sure that uh, 
they are in alignment with what the uh, energy center uh, guidelines are so that they don't, uh, um, Aline, go ahead. We can send a mailing, the, an email out to all the clubs very easily with okay. the information. We can oh, also no. post something to CFA News and we can put it in the CFA newsletter. Good, okay. Coming up. All right, so that'll be taken care of. So, and Cindy uh, sent that out to uh, Cotton States, I believe. Thank you, Cindy. I did, and I have already emailed with Joanne Hardiman, so they're good. Good deal. Thank you so much. Okay, any other business that we need to conduct before we adjourn? Okay, so it's 10.30. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, so, so you to me uh, during the whole meeting? So this is Gavin. Yeah, yeah we have a few questions. Uh, Oh, sorry, that's going to be discussed in closed session. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's 1030 my time, 130 on the East Coast. And um, so uh, after we adjourn, we will rejoin um, for a Zoom meeting and closed session with the Board of Directors. Uh, would you like to take uh, about a 45 minute break uh, so everybody can get a little lunch? Bless Sounds you. good to me. Is that okay? All right, so uh, we'll reconvene at uh, 11.15 my time, which would be 2.15 on the East Coast. Right. Okay. But using the different Zoom link. Yes. You, you, yes. Uh, Aline sent that out this morning. It's a Zoom meeting, not a webinar. Uh, thank you for all the attendees who attended uh, the board meeting today. Uh, for everybody on the panel and all the board members, Aline, James, uh, all of our representatives from the ID, I thank you for your participation. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone.